हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल मेरी को क्या द फाइनल स्टॉप फॉर ऑल योर मेडिकल क्वेरीज आई होप एवरीवन इज गुड एंड टेकिंग केयर ऑफ देमसेल्व प्लीज सब्सक्राइब अवर चैनल इफ नॉट डन ऑलरेडी एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन बटन टू रिसीव द फर्दर नोटिफिकेशन सो फ्रेंड्स टुडे द टॉपिक ऑफ अ क्लास इज इंट्रा ऑपरेटिव ब्रोंकोस्पाज्म In this video, we shall be studying about what is bronchospasm, what are the etiology of bronchospasm, what are the clinical features, and how do you treat it. So let's go and study. So guys, what is intraoperative bronchospasm? As the name suggests, it is a abnormal contraction of the smooth muscles of the bronchi, resulting in acute narrowing and obstruction of the respiratory airway, which means. there is contraction of the smooth muscles of the bronchus because of which there is obstruction of the respiratory airway there are various etiology leading to bronchospasm it can be due to respiratory reasons the problem in the respiratory tract can occurs at the three levels it can occurs at the level of upper airway it can occurs at the level of lower airway and sometimes it can also occurs due to pulmonary causes so basically these three are the reasons because of which can lead to bronchospasm as far as upper airway is concerned there can be tumors of the pharynx there can be weakening of the tracheal muscles tracheomalacia there can be edema of the laryngeal tract sometimes foreign body in the upper airway can also provoke the bronchospasm As far as lower airway is concerned, it can occur due to COPD, patient with history of bronchial asthma, and patient having chronic cough for more than three months, known as bronchitis. Apart from respiratory causes, it can also occur due to other causes such as mechanical irritation. There can be mechanical irritation of the respiratory tract, leading to bronchospasm, such as endotracheal intubation. it can occur due to endobronchial intubation in which the tube is in the bronchus it can occur due to secretions in the airway here you can see there are secretions in the airway which can provoke the bronchospasm it can also occur due to various drugs it can occur due to use of desflurane vaporizers in smokers other drugs such as uh, morphine mevacurium atracurium use of beta blockers use of aspirin nsaids glycopyrrolate and atropine all these drug can also causes bronchospasm in this slide we shall be studying that the patient with history of allergy are much more sensitive and they can be bronchospasm intraoperatively other reasons which can provoke bronchospasm are there can be light plane of anesthesia because of light plane of anesthesia there can be bronchospasm so we should maintain the mac it can occurs due to distended urinary bladder patient with history of smoke and uh, patient with history of carcinoid tumor are much more sensitive and there can be intraoperative bronchospasm now after studying the etiology we shall be studying what are the clinical features in patient having intraoperative bronchospasm we shall be studying in a tablet form So, if these clinical features are present, then we can suspect that the patient is landing up into intraoperative bronchospasm. There can be decrease in the chest movement in the affected side. Also, the air entry can be decrease in the affected side. Sometimes the bronchospasm is so severe, it can lead to silent chest. Because of bronchospasm, as you know, that the expiration is a passive process so there is a increase in the expiratory phase presence of wheeze and bronchi on auscultation is also one of the clinical finding in patient with bronchospasm now we have studied what are the clinical features of bronchospasm now what all changes you will see in the monitor while the anesthesia is being progress and the patient is undergoing the surgery we can find there can be decrease in the saturation and there can be hypoxia because of bronchospasm there will be accumulation of co2 leading to hypercapnia in abg there will be decrease in the tidal volume as there is a decrease in the chest movement 
they can be increase in the peak insulatory pressure so the peak insulatory pressure will be raised and when you see the compliance of the reservoir back you will find it decrease and on capnography there will be characteristic shark fin appearance which is seen in patient undergoing surgery and landing up in bronchospasm in capnography you can see the shark fin appearance now how do you manage the patient when you suspect the bronchospasm during general anesthesia first we shall switch to 100 percent oxygen we should ventilate the patient by hand and stop the surgery or any stimulation we should consider the allergy anaphylaxis and stop the administration of any drug which you suspect if you are having difficulty in ventilating or there is a fall in saturation we should call for help after that we should deepen the plane of anesthesia if ventilation through the endotracheal tube is not possible we should check the position of the tube and exclude whether the tube is blocked or not in non intubation patient exclude the laryngospasm and consider aspiration we can also give certain drug salbutamol and ipatropium bromide these are the beta agonists which we can give MDA inhaler 6 to 8 puffs can be given or we can nebulize the patient with sal salbutamol and ipatropium bromide. Magnesium sulfate is also given 50 mg per kg which is given over the period of 20 minutes. f coagulant is given 200 mg IV 6 hourly. Ketamine is a good bronchodilator and can be tried. We can also nebulize the patient with the recipic epinephrine. So this is how you will manage intraoperative bronchospasm. So thank you guys for watching this short video on intraoperative bronchospasm which is a very important topic. I hope everyone understood this lecture well. Please subscribe our channel if not done already and press the bell icon button to receive the further notification. Kindly do follow us at www.medicogan.co.in Thank you.